What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Child of Light in which we are the adult version. We kind of reached that point in the game where they pulled a Legend of Zelda on us and they turned us into like the adult version of our childhood self. Igniculus has given up on rhyming, he's basically just quit life, he's done. He's finished, he no longer wants to continue now that we left him locked in Pixie Jail or whatever it was that we did. We're gonna do a puzzle here real fast, I think we go down this way. Come on. And so, let's wait for that. We'll duck this. Go through here. Almost made it. You gotta kinda sprint in between these little alcoves. Otherwise, you just aren't gonna make it. Oh, almost missed that one. We're on a timer right now, if you can hear the obnoxious tick-tocking. There are a few things I hate in life as much as the tick-tocking of a clock. It's one of those weird little OCD things that I have that if anybody has a clock, oh my god, I hate that noise. I hate it so very, very much. And I think our final destination should be right up here. These fish are blowing for an unknown reason. I don't know. They seem really excited about it. So I'm not going to ask too many questions. I'm just going to allow them to continue without smiting them or beating them up or anything else. Let's get our freebie treasure here. No booby traps? No whammy? Huh? Rough sapphires. Magic potions. Okay. And is there anything else hidden up and in here? we got to get all up inside this cave's crevice. It's looking at us a little bit funny, but we're going to do it anyways because it can't stop us. What's it going to do? It's inanimate. It's not like it's just going to walk away from the situation. So, oh, bad guys. I'm going to try and avoid fights from here on out because I don't feel like dealing with them, to be honest. I think these shrines do something. I don't know, they might indicate what element or something that I'm supposed to be using. Am I actually wielding the proper things right now? Oh, I also have level ups. So let's go to Ongus and we'll give him defend like 500 or whatever it is that he's gotten good at. That's a little bit odd. That's weird. Why would it let me buy that one, but it wouldn't let me buy that one? That's strange. Well... Just kind of wasted my time there, but whatever. It wouldn't let me click that other one. It was saying that it was totally toast. I think I'm going to go for... What were we doing over here? I think we were going for something. I mean, my guess is that we were going in this direction to get the better Reign of Arrows. With... No, I'm sorry. With Aurora. We were going this way for all of her casted spells so that they would be better. You could get Starlight all three, which is going to be... Amazing once we're able to drop the Daka on the enemy. We've got Flynn over here. And we were moving him towards the better lightning strikes, I think. Alright, and then I wanted to check my oculi and make sure that everybody's rocking things that are not related to water. It looks like we were good about it, and we already took care of business, so nothing to even worry about. I'm only saying that because if I get jumped in combat here, I want to be able to resolve it as rapidly as possible. Got a little clownfish rock in this place. Left to the Piscean Village, or the Piscean Village. I think Piscean's probably the proper pronunciation. Ooh, sneaking in and stealing's a treasure. Well, maybe not. I can't drop through that right there. Oh well. Is there anything up above? Okay. Well, they've got numerical assignments. That one is 13. That one's 5. wonder where the other ones are at. That number assemblage doesn't really make any... I mean, aside from them both being like prime numbers, I guess. I don't know. It don't make any sense to me, but then again... Look at these glowing branches. Numerals, igniculus. Numbers in Latin cast. What are they for? To remember the past. Oh, okay, so you can throw shadows here. That's what we need to do. Let's throw that to right there. And I think we may have to, like, drop it or something? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm about to kill this guy. I don't think I'm gonna have a choice. Let's go ahead and sneak attack him. And we actually didn't get a sneak attack right there, weirdly. Alright, well, we'll keep it rocking. I'm gonna slow down the guy in the front in the hopes that maybe he won't be able to get an attack off. I'm gonna go for just a normal starlight on the front one, I think. And he's gonna armor up, it looks like. There's probably gonna be a counter blow attached to this. Oh, good, it's a magic shield. 
after I target him with everything. You know, hopefully it has limited charges or something and we can like get out of this situation. Because having all of my attacks negated is not the funsies way to start this thing off. And my guess is that they're probably strong versus physical too, given the way the game's been going recently. I didn't see a knockback there. I'm going to bring out Angus and the weird chance that we might be able to kill them. They're not that strong against it. In the odd case that we can kill them with this little 15% ability that just one-shots them. They have a lot of buffs. They seem to spend all of their time just flexing like crazy. There it is. There's the attack I was expecting. And once those shields fall off, I'll get back on them with everything else that I have. But for now, not a whole lot for us to take care of. We're going to go Katagita Cleave on the front runner. I'm going to try and focus fire all my damage. Ooh, obliterated. Good. We actually got the proc right there. That is very, very cool. If you don't know what proc stands for, it's Programmed Random Occurrence, which is basically if you have like any attack that has a 15% chance of doing something on hit, that's a proc. And so that's what it's referred to as. Just so you'll know for the future. I get that question a lot. Whenever I use the word proc, people are like, what's a proc? I go, Programmed Random Occurrence. He's hitting pretty hard now. I gave Angus a bunch of shit in the previous episodes about how he wasn't any good. And I think he's trying to step his game up now. Still not down, but we'll try and disintegrate this guy just because it's fun. Disintegrations are the best. Even though Darth Vader is against them, he's not okay with disintegrations, but I'm okay. If I had bounty hunters, I'd be like, disintegrate whoever you want. Disintegrate like crazy. Bring me them ashes. And so down they go. Not really getting much XP from it, so I don't really think there's any point to really focus on grinding this out super hard. So up on the top floor, we have this, and I'm kind of wondering if I can just push these and drop them. Because obviously they're not going to be able to be activated from up here. We've also got a treasure chest that only Igniculus can get at. And up top, we'll have to drop the other one down as well. Although, I'm a little bit interested in how we're going to be able to... Well, we'll see. I'm not going to sweat it too much right now, mainly because I just took a shower, and nobody likes sweating right after they took a shower. That's the worst. I hate it when you get fr fresh out of the shower. You're feeling all fresh and clean, and then like two seconds later, you just feel dirty again. It's weak. I guess I could just push these off the edge over here. So I suppose we'll gather the keys along so that we can get this door open. Please don't land in the water, by the way. I have no idea how to reset you if you fall in water. I'm going to steal that chest real fast because I don't even need to be there physically to fight with that guy to grab it. Seems like a pretty good benefit, especially if you're a thief. I mean, I'd be using Igniculus for all kinds of evil deeds if I had his superpowers. It'd be bad. I would be a villain. Okay, so the E key and the D key. I have to, like, move my hands around on the keyboard here to get this to work. It won't let me pull it off, so maybe it'll let me push it. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And then I'll use the E key the D key again. Oh my god, so much finger aerobics going on right now. And then I think if we bring the other one in here, we should be square. There's a 62 right there. I've got the 13. Where's the 13 hiding at? There it is. Let's go ahead and flash that right there. I have no idea how many of these I'm going to have to gather, though. Because there's a 3. There's just, like, a bunch of them in there. There's all kinds of Roman numerals going on. Oh, I guess I could just toggle it. That probably would have made my dragging a little bit easier. I guard the door. I will smash you to the floor. Give us back the villagers, you boar. You will not get those Piscean gnomes back. I ate them all. What do you think about that? Okay, let's figure out what this guy's weak to. We got a little bit of time to play around with. He's got, oh, he's got devil doggies too. Okay. Let me go ahead and get them slowed down. I'm going to go for a starlight on doggy number one. And then we'll go for a katagita cleave on doggy number one as well. He's going to gather strength. That flail is kind of threatening, and I would worry that I would hit myself in the face with it. I bought nunchucks one time, and honestly, nunchucks were the worst investment ever. I don't think I... 
I don't think I can keep count of how many times I smacked myself in the face with them as a kid trying to learn how to use them properly. Then again, I probably could have took like nunchuck classes or something. That was probably like the plan that I should have enacted. I'm gonna continue going for just like those death blows. He's gonna do Ogre's Wrath, which is gonna be an AoE, which is pleasurable. And they're already starting with the setbacks and whatnot. Really, the game's obsession with status effects is really kind of unwelcome, to be honest. It's just like every fight is just a mess of them. I think... I'll just throw a potent healing tonic up. I don't really have any other option right now. I could have swapped in somebody else for Angus, but... Angus probably gonna die anyways. For being a tank, he's not very strong. That's my concern with Angus is, like, he's supposed to be a tank, but he's got no better defense than anybody else. He still takes hits at the exact same level. Okay. Worst tank ever. We're gonna keep the loving on this guy because Tumble's quick. Although we still don't even have him, like, at lower health, so... I'll have to consider that for a bit. I'm gonna slow him down for a second, and let's go for a long cast Light Ray on him. And if it gets too close, we'll go ahead and interrupt him. And then instead of doing that, let's go ahead and throw a heal on her just to make sure that she stays alright. Light Ray is out. That didn't do... I should have just stuck with the other spell, I think. For the extra cast time, it appears to have done the exact same damage. Flayla's out one more time for 70 damage. We're going to soak an entire turn's worth of hits right here. Hopefully it doesn't come out too badly. It's the critical hits you got to watch out for. Those criticals are nasty as hell, and of course, our turn landed at exactly the wrong time. Every single time. Okay, and so now we're slowed down again. I don't know why I don't open every single fight by just putting... Like, this game just uses slows way too much. It's like, oh my god, so many slows. It's ridiculous. So I think I just need to open every single fight by putting up ailment protection. It's a bore, and I don't really like doing it, but it appears as though the game is trying to force the mechanic. Got ourselves a paralyzed right there. That's going to allow us to have an opening. I'm going to attack the wrong person because my thumb got overexcited. He appears to be weak to melee, which is good, so that'll be pleasurable in the future. Slow him down. He's going to get his instant cast AoE off again. God. Alright. Go ahead and spam potions again. And all I can do is hope that the dog doesn't get a turn too soon. Because I really need this heal to go off. There it is. Alright. That instant cast AoE he does is really, really bad. It's brutal. It hurts a lot. It's painful on many different levels. Okay, even on normal difficulty, the fights just feel really, really tedious. It's just the addition, I think, of the third unit every single time. If we had three guys, it wouldn't be so bad, because then you'd be trading blows tactically, but I still get that feeling where we're just floating nonstop, not really accomplishing anything. Let me go ahead and grab some wishes. And I didn't really need that one, so that was a mistake, but we'll do a little bit of healing right here. It'll help out a little bit. Who did I just attack? Oh good, I attacked the right one, but he's strong. Pretty strong versus, well, just about everything. We're gonna go ailment protection on, sure, let's just put it on her right now since everybody else already has theirs up. God, he's so fast. I doubt Aurora's gonna survive this turn. Oh, she did. Okay. She's going to need to swap out. So we'll go ahead and drop her for somebody that's going to be able to actually like accomplish something. So maybe Robert. And then we'll go for a Reign of Arrows. I'll try and slow him down long enough to get it off. And then we'll go for a second ailment protection on Robert. Unless I click the wrong thing. And then we won't. 
Oh well, there it goes. It made it off. I don't really mind. As long as we can't be chain slowed again, because that is really starting to just grind my gears. Actually, I'm going to see if I can go for a double shot. How did he get that off first? I clearly landed first on that meter. Ah, uh, he didn't die. I probably should have healed right there, but I really wanted to get a kill off so that they wouldn't be dominating the time bar anymore. Lowering their numbers always seems to be like the best thing you can do in the early game. Got a dodge off, that's going to be good. Go for another rain of arrows on everybody that we can. Grab some wishes while we wait. And then with her, we're going to go for a heal all because we're not really that injured to the point where we can't use a heal all to maximum effect. Got ourselves a freebie paralyzed right there. I'll take it. Just in case he's trying to do that instant cast ridiculous spammy AoE. I don't enjoy his fashion sense either. The skull is upside down. I'd prefer it to be flipped around the other way and facing outwards. The fact that it goes backwards, it's just... You know, when designing your wardrobe, you want to make sure that everything makes sense properly. I'm just going to keep raining arrows on these guys. And now we've got the boss paralyzed. Even better. Go for a tumble right there. I mean, I don't like you that much, Dogie, but... You know. Probably go for just a simple... Shoot arrow this time. Let's keep him chain stunned if we can. I prefer to dictate the pace of combat. Ogre's Wrath is out, so that's going to be the AoE. We're going to need to negate that on the next turn. We're immune, ailment immune. How do we get knocked back? We are ailment immune. Oh my god. Okay, so apparently there are exceptions to said ailment immune rule. We're going to go for a heal on Robert because he's looking a little bit sketchy. I don't feel like we're DPSing these guys fast enough. I need something to happen right here. I need single target. Then again, I am fishing for paralyzes, basically. Go for a heal all rank one, I guess. I'm going to slow the boss down slightly so that that lands. It's only going to do like 80 health, though, so it's only going to buy us a second. Refill the wishes. And then we'll start spamming a little bit of healing on people that are looking low. Actually, yeah, if you got Tumble All, use Tumble All, whatever. Might as well be hitting everything simultaneously instead of one thing. The dog managed to dodge. There we go. I don't know if this big guy, I don't think we've canceled him yet. Does he counter? Yeah, he does. Okay, so countering him is not in our best interest. There's Flail. Try and get a heal right there. Just kind of spot heal a little bit. That's what I was worried about. I was pretty sure that's what was going to happen. I don't know if he's paralyzed or what's going on right now, but he's definitely not playing the game any longer. Let's swap somebody out. We'll put in Finn for now. And then Finn... Going for like a water attack on the dog because he's like burning bark, and so I think that's probably going to be the best move I can do. Maybe it'll kill him even. If he's... Okay, so he did 260. That's not a bad hit. That's a pretty it's a pretty hardcore hit. Go ahead and throw a heal on myself. Or on Rubella's self. And then we'll do the same thing right here because it seemed to work out okay last time. Refill some of our wishes. And now that they're out of the way, it's going to be time to put melee characters back in because the boss is clearly weak to melee. Very weak to melee. 
Which is weird, considering he's like a huge ogre guy. You would think that if you were following normal tropes, you would think that he would be perfectly fine with melee damage. It would be all the other stuff that scares him off. We'll put in Ongus, because his Katagita Cleave is actually pretty good if he's working against people that are weak to whatever it is that he's peddling. Down he goes, and so there's another boss fight handled. Couple of level ups that we're gonna have to deal with. What about the little girl, Jen? What will she do, abandoned, forgotten? If she waits long, it will bring more pain. We've got to tell her then. Okay, so it wants us to go back and talk about what happened with the ogre. But first, we're going to level up. We've got a lot of level ups to fire around, so we might as well handle that. Go with... Oh, I guess I can't take the alternate advancements yet. Or maybe it takes two? Oh, it does. It takes two. So I was wrong earlier. i just not very good at reading. All right. If only it was the first time. We'll take tumble two. I didn't realize I had to save up to use the later ones. That's pretty metal, but it, it makes sense. Well, I guess in that case, we will save his points and we'll save her points so that we can use them on more useful things later on. Let's go back and tell the little girl, and then after we do that, we'll break this episode off. Because I feel like we've gotten enough done in this episode to where I don't feel... As though we kind of did there. We took out another boss. I mean, what else could you accomplish in a game like this? The boss fights seem to be really, really long. So every now and again, I just feel like we waste entire episodes beating on a boss for a while. Lowered the difficulty and everything, and it's still a long process. I don't remember if she was upstairs or downstairs. I'll try upstairs first. She must have been downstairs then. Or was it left or right? I don't know. These Piscean people. It's hard to identify. They don't use the same postal codes as everybody else. Aurora, you're here! Jen, come near. Drust went out a while ago, but it's alright. Since my parents are coming. What do we do until they come into sight? Can I play my flute? Yes, please. It will make the night bright. Aurora, she makes do just like you. What does it mean? She's heavy too. My mother sang that song to me long ago, while she was still alive. Oh. Little one, we go to recover the lost sun and bring on the day. Please, come. The day will stop the Dark Queen? Wait until I use my magic. I will make her scream. Nothing breaks up the awkward conversation of telling somebody their parents are dead like a little flute music. That's clearly the way to cure it. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for another episode of Child of Light. I will see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.